Yes! It's Game Bite! And here at Game Bite, we want to show you some love with the help of Jinx.com. If you want to get 10% off of your entire shopping cart on Jinx.com, use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout. That's right. If Shroud is not your C9, but your number one favorite streamer, or, you know, if you're looking for a Nerf This Diva shirt, if other games tickle your fancy, whether it's World of Warcraft or HOTS or Hearthstone, definitely Hearthstone, uh, Brave the Storm and Jinx.com's wide variety of gamer and geek swag. And when you do, use the promo code QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout. That's right. QUITSTALLING underscore 366 at checkout saves you 10% off of all your gamer and geek swag on Jinx.com. And you know what? That's what we want to do here on QUITSTALLING. We want to we want to save you guys some money. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. 10%. That's all we can give you right now. That's all we can do. Sorry. Like, hopefully that'll help. Hopefully that'll help. All right, guys. Welcome to Game Bite. Yes, Game Bite. The weekly episodic adventures of two to three. Actually, right now we're four. Fairly, fairly young men in their quest to find gaming advice, gaming love, <clears> gaming <throat> uh, everything. You know, we just we just want to find the deeper meaning of gaming, like they did in Ready Player One. Wow. That guy, yeah, that guy's uh, coming to, to yeah. Asia Pop Comic Con. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Talk about the yo <laughs> yo. Who you calling fairly, huh? Who you calling fairly? <laughs> I ain't fairly. Oh man. Well, I'll get to that voice that you're hearing in just a second, guys. But yes, yes, I am Harold. No, not Harold. It's Harold. H e r a l d. Yes, the spelling makes a difference because it brings the sexiness down to zero percent. If if you found the name Harold sexy, you know, just, just spelling it this way, just you know, takes it away. It's gone. It's gone. It's not sexy at all. I thought it was uh, a big, oh, by one percent, so it's now I'm ninety nine percent sexy. It's not just a hundred percent. Just ninety nine now. <laughs> yes, and I'm broadcasting live from the Quitstalling Media Studio studio. Uh, and with me today, aside from our very special guest, I gotta introduce the co-hosts first. I gotta make you guys wait. I gotta make you guys wait. With me today are my, you know, very lovely co-hosts. Let's start off with. Uh, the guy who's no longer selling his Mac, it's been done and dusted, he's giving it away. It's Instant DZ himself, the Maelstrom of Hate and Fury. How you doing, Diego Z? Hey, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Thanks for you're having me good. again. I'm glad we're you're, doing you're a, the show. I have no choice, what? you're 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 my regular yeah, co-host. <laughs> I force you to thank, <laughs> thankfully <laughs> force you to have me. <laughs> thankfully force you to have me. Uh, I'm good, That's I'm smart. good. Uh, Very smart. Uh, it's kind of a bummer we didn't get to do the scrims yesterday, but at least we're doing something Game Bite related this week or something gaming related this week, so all is good. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, you know his name. Harold does the intro better than I do. It's Mick the Guzman. <laughs> I do it, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it turns into to me. Hey, everybody. Would you guys like a V-Fresh? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm going to open a V-Fresh. Is it okay if I eat a V-Fresh while we're doing do this? Do it. All right. Cool, 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 cool. This is very good. I bought this in Laguna. It's actually considered imported now. Apparently, they don't make them here anymore. Oh, wow. or maybe they were just they were just joking around with me. I don't know. Yeah, V Fresh. I know this is the one with Glock Nine. If you guys are familiar, it has the Glock Nine commercial. Well, oh, pretty good. Anyway, yeah, hey, 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 everybody, hey, um, what's up, people, on, <laughs> peeps on the chat? What's up, Harold? What's up, Diego? Or it's up to our special secret, super secret guest that you guys might not know. Oh, back to you, Harold. Oh, okay. okay thank you, Mick. Uh, and of course, guys, as we've teased, as we've prodded and poked, we've got content creator, Hearthstone Fireside Gathering goer, the man, the myth, the local <laughs> legend himself. It's Miko P. How you doing, Miko P? Hey, guys. Calm down, fans. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, guys, thank you very much for having me here. Oh, Hi, Miko. Yes. Oh. yes. Yes. Man, Hello, you... entourage in the back. Oh, yes. <laughs> Miko P is... and, and, and his bodyguard. <laughs> bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> the Robin to your Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Mono guard in the back. <laughs> MG. <laughs> MG. 
Oh, uh, yeah. he's gone. <laughs> oh, he knew. He he knew. He, he's shy, guys. Mine on Gardish. MG is shy. Give him a couple minutes. He'll he'll warm up. Uh, but you know, guys, today's about Miko P. So Miko, man, we're so happy to have you. Uh, you know, how are you doing, man? I'm feeling great, actually. I'm feeling cold and nervous, and actually a bit paranoid because I'm, you know, I'm running on data at the moment because, oh. you know, all the internet problems happening at home. But on the other hand, I'm very glad to be here with you guys. I can finally, I can finally uh, chat with you online. Oh man, our, our, our hearts are so warm with the effort that you've taken it to just come on the stupid show that we do every week. Uh, <laughs> the length that you've gone through. I, I've been walking back and forth uh, Green Hills for, uh, for like a couple of times. <laughs> Looking oh, for wow. a good spot. We appreciate it so much, dude. We, we thank... We, oh my god, my hair is a mess. We can't thank you enough. Uh, so, you know... We're going to get to it. We don't want to make you run on data. And, you know, you mentioned you're feeling paranoid and, and a little nervous. That happens when Mick is around. But, you know, we'll, we'll get yeah. through that. We'll power through that. Um, it's totally fine. <laughs> I mean, if if, uh, if I suddenly get cut off, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. We'll, we'll stall. We'll stall till you get back. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so at the start of every show, this is what we do, Miko. And I'm sure you're okay. very familiar with this. <laughs> I don't need to tell you. Uh, I we, hope that we... my first time. Oh, what do I do, guys? What do I do? What do I do? Yeah, I'll... Oh, see. Uh, so, at the start of every show, we ask everyone, my co-hosts, our guests, and of course, all the fine folks at home, what have you been playing? Mick, man, show us how it's done. What have you been playing? So, um, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware that the um, the summer sale just ended last July 2, and a ton of games were like, dropped. And there's this one game that I've been very, very interested in for the past year or so but then I, I was like i keep forgetting it was never on my wish list so I, I kept forgetting about it it was called this war of mine so i finally got to purchase it i'm gonna start playing it probably tomorrow i'm, I'm very excited because um wait doesn't the summer sale end tomorrow does it end tomorrow i, heard, I thought it was like yeah. july 2. oh right. so it's in the here. fifth okay fine you guys yeah, can here, still here. buy it it's like what 60 percent off it's like yeah. 60 to 70 percent off so it's like 170 pesos to 100 80 around that much and it's a pretty good game it's a really nice game it's very um very heavy it's very heavy hitting so if you guys get the chance to if you're into side scrolling um rpg based kinds of games that are very dark and draft and stuff like that you guys should definitely get this game so aside from that um, tell us again it's called this war of mine this war of mine, dude. Oh, this war of mine. mine. It's a very old game. It's like 2014, I think. Well, not really very old, but it's an old game. But I think it was 2014, probably even earlier than that. Um, it's a very good game. It's about uh, a post-apocalyptic, um, post-apocalyptic scenario where like war raged uh, this this uh, the, a country or like this this is the setting. So you're just trying to survive as a refugee. So tomorrow, pretty much. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, aside from that, yeah, of course, the the usual Hearthstone. Um, I am proud to say that I have finally reached an all-time low again. I have finally reached rank 18 after five or six seasons of successfully avoiding it. I've finally f fallen back to 18 because I'm very frustrated with the meta now. It's oh. not fun. I find I it to you. be very boring. And I'm very vocal about this. You guys know how much I love the game. <laughs> but it's a very boring game right now. And this always happens when it's the new Hearthstone season where there's only one expansion there. So there are only four expansions where there are, whereas it's fun when there's like five or six expansions. Right now there are four. So it's boring as toot. Okay. And yeah, man, that's, uh, why, that's why I, pr I play that Prince Liam. That guy's that guy yeah. pretty cool. That guy's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, of course. Uh, the usual Final Fantasy fourteen. They just dropped a new patch, which is the... Um, it's called Heaven on Eye. It's a deep dungeon where it's basically a dungeon that consists of over 100 floors. So you, it's it's non-stop. You get a lot of experience points. You get a lot of loot. You get a lot of materials to craft expensive items. And, of course, there's a storyline to go, to go with those 100 floors that you are going to force yourself to finish. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's basically what I've been doing. What about you, Diego? Oh, 
Oh, what have I been doing? Well, season eleven, as you know, just dropped. So uh, the oh, other day, we other day I placed with with the guys and with the guys. And honestly, this season is the best run I've ever had. Season um, of what, Diego? Season of se- love? Oh right, what am I talking about? <laughs> let's let's dial it back. So I've been playing Overwatch. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing Overwatch. Duh. And um, we we season eleven of Overwatch just dropped the other day and. This is the best run I've had so far with um, placements of seven wins and three losses. And nice. I placed, I already placed in platinum. And then oh boy. even after oh boy. that, we still played a bit more, a few more games. So, right, go- no, platinum. <laughs> no, I, I played, you played a few games after you, you ranked in plat. So you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, now I'm back to gold. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I just, I'm still I just plat. lost all of my progression. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Well, I did it. So, well, I did it. <laughs> I'm still in platinum, Mick. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, back, I'm still in platinum. Uh, and then, yeah, so far, everything's been going great. I'm just waiting for Hammond because who would have thought a hamster would be the best thing that I've, that that's ever come to Overwatch? <laughs> yeah, man, we'll talk about that Thanks. later, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, what? 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 His name is Hammond, right? Hammond. Hammond. <laughs> Hammond. <laughs> yeah. Hammond. The His last name is Iberico. <laughs> Hamon Iberico. Hamon, last name Iberico. Oh, so yeah, um, other than that, um, of, as you know, I've still been dabbling in Realm Royale, but lately I've, it's been getting, you know how they always say, like if you're if you're an Overwatch player and you decided to go into like PUBG, Fortnite, oh, you should play this game because it's less stressful. That's total bullshit. All those games are so <laughs> less stressful as Overwatch, I, I swear to God. <laughs> That's total it's, bullshit. It's the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, and like Real Royale is no, it's it's in the same, it's it's there as well. I mean, the stress is there. Um, consider, considering that the game's in alpha, um, the hitboxes are whacked up. Again, the TTK is bad. Time to kill is too fast. But the hitboxes are really ridiculous. So I think I, I haven't, I only saw this a while ago, and I didn't have time to research on it. But I think they released a hitbox patch. <laughs> As in, there's this one clip. I there's there's a video I clipped from a streamer I was watching where he directly shot the guy's face. Like you can see it. You can see you can see it hit the guy's face and it misses for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe there was <laughs> lag, but I don't know why. Um, ping ping ping. Yeah. <laughs> ping ping. <laughs> Lastly, um, okay, this is not a game I have. This is not a game I've played, but. I've been following it. Well, I've, I've been kind of following it since you know I'm a fan of XCOM, right? So of course yeah. you know that the early access of Phoenix Point is already available. Yeah. So it's been available for uh, some months now. But the thing is, like, I was, I want to watch. I'm not sure if I want to buy it because it's fifty dollars. Uh, if you go to the website, <laughs> you, can, you can buy the game like already because it's. I think um, it's still. I'm not sure if it's. I think it's crowdfunded. I think. Uh, but the game is already available for download, the digital download edition for thirty dollars, and you can get the game. You can redeem it on Steam or GOG June of next year. But they allow you to have an early access patch, which is fifty dollars, um, which of course comes with like stuff like Alien, Living Guns, and you know usual in-game stuff. And but um, I don't know, an art book, a soundtrack, a wallpaper. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So like you know they. They put all the fluff in it so they can let you. So it, it sounds like you're getting more. <clears throat> it's like mm, so, tasty. Yeah. So then I did like I just decided to watch gameplay of it. Uh, oh. I watched the gameplay of Phoenix Point. It is by the same creator as the original XCOM. It's exactly the same game, but there's a few differences, of course. Where in like you know how in Fallout, in wait, I forgot which Fallout that was because I never played Fallout, is where you can target certain parts of the body. Oh, I. Uh, yeah, I well, know. think about that. In XCOM, now you instead of just hitting the enemy normally, like in any like um, uh, tactical RPG game, you can target certain parts, and that'll deal different effects on oh. the opponent. So some small changes like that, but there's really not much. I mean, the game's in early access. The animations aren't so um, fluid. Crisp yet. Yeah, the sounds of the guns are like more. Honestly, it sounds like. They, they just got a pot <laughs> and, and smashed the pot in front of the microphone and that's the poop, 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 poop. 
for the guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the sound of the guns. It sounds like you just hit a pot in the wall or something. So, oh wow. Honest, so like if you think about it, if you're if anyone's on in the chat is looking to get this game, uh, honest, wait for it to come out. If you want to play a fully fledged uh, isometric tactical RPG, you're better off just playing XCOM 2 and downloading a shit ton of mods. That's pretty much it. But the game, when Phoenix Point does come out, I have a good feeling it's going to be good. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I am. All right. Nico P, man. As if we don't okay. already know what, we, as if we don't already know what you're going to say. What, what have you been playing, brother? What have you been playing? I have been playing Tekken 7. Oh, what? what? Surprise! <laughs> what? What? Are you serious? Yeah, uh, I play on a casual level. But, okay, here's the serious part. Um, I've been playing Shadowverse for uh, hours these past few days because there's a really big tournament in Singapore um, this August and it has a really good prize pool so I thought I might try my luck there um, other than that oh yeah in case you're wondering Shadowverse is a how do I explain this it's uh it's like anime Hearthstone basically <laughs> it, uh, Hearthstone so you <laughs> no Yu-Gi-Oh does not have does not have beautiful women in their cards. Okay, their there we go. Hearthstone is beautiful to the <laughs> women. Waifus, waifus, waifus. Waifu Hearthstone, man. Come on. Okay. We all know it's Hearthstone. All right. So, yeah. yeah um, it's, uh, you can download it for free, and they give you like a ton of, uh, well, a ton of stuff to get started with. So, yeah, they have a big tournament in August. It will be a qualifier for the actual world championships where they have a million dollars in prize pool. Actually, this uh, oh. this tournament in August, their prize pool is at ten thousand dollars. So, it's something. That's a that's a uh, lot of something. <laughs> it's a lot of somethings, and yeah, we're gonna go and try you know, try to get our hands on even just a part of it. Dude, that's so cool. Okay, uh, moving on to Hearthstone. Um, I've been playing Hearthstone to complete the quests, and. Uh, Actually, I think uh, I'll have to disagree with Mick. I really love the ah! meta game, but but I have to agree. Agree on... to disagree. <laughs> but but I agree on the. Yeah. It's, it's quite a chore on the ladder. Mm -hmm. It because is. you'll be meeting um, taunt druids, or a taunt druid, or a token druid, or another taunt druid, and some probably some other variations variations of shaman but in tournament play the meta is so good um it rewards a lot of uh, creativity when it comes to uh building your lineup also uh th and that's just for the conquest format for the last hero standing format it really rewards preparation and uh coupling it with the fact that the you know it's just the dawn of a new uh meta game well at least a couple uh, a month back it makes for a very exciting uh, time, tournament-wise. But yeah, the ladder can be quite a grind. Oh, man. Oh, so, nice. so have you at least been enjoying your grind? Or is it more of like, oh, man, I got to do this because I need to? Uh, it's more like, uh, okay, I have some quests to complete. Who can I victimize with Shadow <laughs> of Cam today? Oh, oh man. You, okay. So I just went going online, cheese the people that I can, and then get out real quick. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes, especially with with quest based games, you gotta do what you gotta do to get by, right? You gotta do what you have to do to, I don't know, like ne get to the next point, like to to get the next pack or to get the, that extra gold you need, get that quest. Yeah, done. I mean, I mean, just uh, I guess you can call it. It's like your daily quest to World of Warcraft. You just do your do what you gotta do for that, uh, you know, for that day. Then, if you really enjoyed playing, then you can play some more. And then, uh, when you're done, you're done. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I I totally understand. Yeah, especially as a World of Warcraft player, I I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, you whip out this flying too. mount, go from point A, go to point B, <laughs> get a gold, yeah. and then leave. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. The grind, I, that's, oh, shoot, I gotta play World of Warcraft this week as a chore, as a chore, because stuff is going away soon. Okay, uh, and you know, guys, uh, thanks for asking. I, what I've been playing 
is uh I've what been... have you been playing harold <laughs> what have you been playing we want to know. no no it, i don't i'm playing anything not so aside from the usual <laughs> overwatch games and hearthstone on the toilet which i still actively do uh i actually decided because of world cup fever to play some fifa i wow. up until this point i'd only put in three hours because origin tells you how much time you've put into that game i've only played three hours of fifa uh, FIFA 18 to be specific. And because of the World Cup DLC, I played a little bit more. And then I tried some modes out that I'd never had before. You know, uh, one is FIFA Ultimate Team because I'd ne I'd, I didn't try it because everyone was telling me how much of a cash grab it was for EA. And I see it. I definitely see how how trading Cardi and, and how much of a cash grab it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and that's not where the, the, the beauty lies. The beauty lies in my own vanity because I decided to play myself. <laughs> Get up and up. I found out that wow. there's this mode <laughs> called My Pro. All right, oh, wow. this this is an actual mode where you you create yourself and then you play online with other people who can't get off their asses and play real soccer. <laughs> so, <laughs> this man. Oh, look, so, at that. look at that! Seventeen left me. So I, I decided. The, uh, list is uncanny. Thank you. Uh, it, it's like if if I if I had more Latino features, I guess. Yeah. So I decided to to play FIFA Pro Clubs, uh, and at first I thought, okay, I have to join someone else's club, and then I discovered, you could actually make your own team. So I made, uh, with limited resources, Team Quit Stalling FC. <laughs> on FIFA, <laughs> on FIFA, my club. Quit stalling FC. I even made the Quit Stalling Media Park, which is uh, our home field. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. And uh, apparently, you know, you need more than one person to play a full game against other other teams. So I decided to play a pickup game. And you know, when you play a pickup game, you never know who you're gonna get. And luckily, I was grouped in with a bunch of decently. Uh, skilled players. Let me let me try and load this up. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I'm about to receive the ball and just do my the thing I do in real life, but you know, in a video game. So, <laughs> wow, it's uh, did you power slide through the whole field? No, I did the LeBron uh, celebration. Sylvestre <laughs> yeah. with the oh, look at that. The yeah, chip. so it's. It's playing into my own vanity, and I might continue playing this week. <laughs> I didn't think I'd enjoy it. There's the two months broke. left. Yeah, yeah right? There's they two months you. left in the, in the lifespan of FIFA 18. FIFA 19 is coming out in two months. And they I found a way to just enjoy a game I thought I didn't, I didn't want to put any more hours in. So I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised with how good uh, my, my pro, uh, pro clubs is. And I found some YouTube series... Uh, online where people you know, decided to put a full team together, full team of 11, 13 people with subs. Uh, and they're trying to get as good as they can in this mode. It's like 11 individual players. You're not controlling all of them. It's, it's, it's insane and it's really funny. So like, I, I might just stick around and see what happens because you don't have to take this seriously. You can just mess around and, and you know, just, just, and, and the voice comms are automatic, like in Overwatch. So like, a second you go into the lobby, you just hear, hey, hey, Harold, Harold, play, can you talk? And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I hear other people. And then I check the server list, and it says I'm in Indonesia. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Like, hey, Harold, play. Uh, you play you play left winger, and I <laughs> play striker. I was like, yes, this guy knows what I want to do. So <laughs> was, I can see really from funny. your character, you can run fast. <laughs> <laughs> you run real fast. <laughs> you run real fast. So that was, yeah, it was so much fun. Uh, going into the chat real quick, guys. So everyone in the chat, if you want to tell us what you've been playing, feel free. Uh, nope underscore plays in the chat today. She's uh, she's been playing Fortnite. They just released Playground Mode. This this sounds interesting. Let me let me bring up a video of Playground Mode. Uh, what else did she say? Uh, you just practice building without any enemies around. The world event was crazy to watch, and having the map wow. be affected by it is awesome, dude. Playground mode sounds like Minecraft in Fortnite. This is yeah. this is how you get people in. Guys, you want to try out playground mode right now? Like, should Sorry, we, what's playground we... mode? It, it, it it's like have... it's like sandboxy thing. I don't know. It's Minecraft like you in can, Fortnite. You can, 
Yeah, it's mine. Yeah, it's basically you can just think of whatever game modes you want to do. So oh. it's like a it's like a sandbox Fortnite game. Yeah. So sandbox uh, Fortnite mode. There we go. Thanks for tuning in to Game Bite, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye, see everybody. Guys. Bye. <laughs> we'll play Fortnite. <laughs> this looks like fun. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. MG is back. Just MG, MG, MG in the background from Miko P. I, if you ask, I bet, I bet people in the chat. Oh, that's what I, what I was gonna say. I was just gonna say, I dare you to ask Man on Guard <laughs> what he's been playing this week. Oh. MG, MG, what you it, been playing? <laughs> yeah. MG. Okay. Oh, okay, so. Well, no. Oh my god, no. No, 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 come back, no, come back, no, come back, he's dead, oh my god, he's doing it, doing it, clip this, someone clip this, man, Miku V is the best guest ever, he plays COC, wow, he's a play Clash of Clans, oh boy, Right, I'm gonna clip first that of all, <laughs> first of all, this one's for Miko P. Oh. And then this Crazy. one's for Clear Guard. This one's for Manal Guard. MG! MG! MG, the real MVP. Uh, <laughs> how do I recover from that? <laughs> as, okay. Potato as Watch awesome. uh, 213 on the chat goes I've been playing Overwatch PTR. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty course. sure because a lot of people are super hyped about Wrecking Ball. I mean, Hammond or Hammond <laughs> or Hammond Iberico. Or what I want to call it. Oh, uh, man. Bobby is straight in the chat. Bob says, Last and Lava. Man, because he's the best guest ever. He is the he, man. You basically just asked him, Hey, what have you been playing? Al almost anything for you guys. Almost, almost, almost anything. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. MG just left the screen. He's like, I'm done. Drop the mic. And then he left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I clipped it. All right, guys. <laughs> oh, we clipped oh, it. Save that's it. why DZ's been so quiet. He's been clipping it. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying. He was trying to fix it. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. So for those of you uh, listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, there, was, there is a security guard that Mikupi has c going around him all the time whenever he goes to certain Starbucks's. <laughs> <laughs> and he just asked him what he's been playing. And, you know, now we, now we know he's been playing Clash of Clans. So good job to MG. All right, guys. Let's get to the meat of the show. This is the part where everyone's been waiting for. That everyone's been waiting for. It's time. It's time to interview the one, the only, Miko P. Well met. <laughs> Epic! Epic in this show. Oh, this part of the show is brought to you by the Quit Stalling Geek Cast. Yes, the Quit Stalling Geek Cast is on every 11. Oh, what is that? Uh, 11? Yeah, 11 a.m. Tuesdays. Weekly. We were supposed to have a show this week, but sadly we weren't able to. But uh, next week, me and Wancho <coughs> so hopefully uh, are back on track with, of course, the one and only Sensei Humor joining us for the first time. If you want to get your geek fix, Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Philippine Standard Time is the time. That's me, Wancho, and Sensei Humor, Derek O'Brien. Guys, now it's time to interview Mikopi. Now is the time to find out the deepest, darkest secrets of the man we all have come to know as Mikopi. Miko, man, for yes. those who don't know who you are, uh, as someone we know would say, Sino ka? Um, Sino ka? Uh, who is Mikopi? Tell, tell it, give us a, give us a, give us the broadest strokes of Miko P. Okay, so uh, once again, hi everyone, I'm Miko. My handle Ooh. is Miko P. So I am a digital card game player. So particularly, uh, I play particularly Hearthstone, Shadowverse, a little, little bit of MTG Arena on the side. I kind of consider myself to be on the middle of being a casual player and a competitive player. Um, casual in the sense that I don't grind the ladder as hard as the pros do, mm -hmm. but competitive in the sense that um, I do take my time to research the meta and practice and participate in tournaments whenever I can find the time to join them, both here and abroad. I just really like uh, you know butting heads with other players and experiencing uh, you know how it is to play against the pros and stuff like that. Other than that, 
I take pictures and uh, I try to make videos and what else? I tried streaming and uh, I'm glad that I'll be able to go back to streaming this month. Finally, nice. finally. <laughs> Woo! It's and we're okay. in LB. Yeah, we're in LB, uh, mostly playing Shadowverse and Hearthstone. Awesome. What has been preventing you from streaming up until this point? Well, uh, mostly yeah, adulting and stuff. Uh, although That's for the last two months... <laughs> you do. <laughs> mostly for the past two months, uh, I've been uh, out of town. So yeah, I had a hard time actually making a solid schedule. But now that I'm back, uh, I think I'll be able to make time to stream even just for a couple of hours a day. Awesome, awesome stuff. I, I can't wait. So do you, do you know what your schedule will be like? Or is that something you're still trying to figure out? Um, okay, so specific days, I'm not really sure because uh, life as a freelance photographer can be really surprising. I mean, you get booking suddenly and then you have to make time for it. Um, you get to ed you need to edit work soon as fast as possible. So mm -hmm. that adds up too. But generally, I'll be on from 9 p.m. onwards. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. I can't, I, I'm actually a fan of the photos you've taken and the coverage you've done. I, I, we Thank showed you. a clip, a couple of clips of you know you meeting Doc, uh, Doctor Suspect, uh, a little bit <laughs> of Shroud earlier on. Uh, you know, even though you're relatively new to doing content creation, like the 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 passion really shows. You know the. The fact that you care about what you're doing is, is oh, very yeah. evident Harold, from, from the get-go. Your mic's off. Your mic, oh, your no. mic cut. Your mic cut. Hello. <clears throat> I'm still... <clears throat> it says I'm still good. I'm hear you for a while. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, Squidward? Can you hear me now, Squidward? Mayday, mayday. <laughs> weird. Oh, no. It's, it's Sorry, normal have, on my end. That's so weird. I have a yeah. question, Miko. When okay. you say butting heads with other players, what do you mean by that? And also, which head? Hey! hey! Okay, okay, okay. So, so <clears throat> this is a head, okay? Yeah. Now, chances are the <laughs> other person also has one. Okay. But you have two options when you play Hearthstone. You are in a tournament. You either butt them uh, literally and then hurt yourselves and then get disqualified in the process, or you can butt them in the sense that in a figuratively, like a head, like in head-to-head -head competition. Mm -hmm. He's right. I think that's how it works. Really? <laughs> you don't get into like serious arguments. Oh, 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 oh. assuming. Don't don't, don't use the other head. By the way, don't use the other head. Just this one's fine. Just it's Steve. Over... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> all right. Um. All right. So I think it was a Skype issue, but Harold, can you try talking again because uh, Tracy and Nope says you they can hear you. Yeah, I was trying to tell you guys. Everything's normal on my end, and that's the end that, that matters. Well, we're your <laughs> That's his important Twitter. Right, I'm ending the call. Bye, guys. If the, if the guest can't hear you, then it's not good. He, he's yeah, like, that's cool. So what, what that, that's awesome, Miko. And, you know, as, as, as odd as the direction that we just took was. Smack. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I do I do want to get through this yeah um <laughs> see now I sound like a jerk um <laughs> no um so you know you you've managed to travel recently like you, uh if I'm not mistaken you went to Gamescom uh in Cologne nice oh Gamescom uh haven't been there although I've been oh, yeah, to been uh Dreamhack Austin Dreamhack Dream Dream there we go Dream uh, and oh. that's where you met guys like uh guys like C9 <laughs> uh, former C9 Trout and uh <laughs> Doc right so oh, what yeah, was yeah. your experience like there? I want to, you know, while it's still fresh in your memory, while we're still early on in this interview, I want to get your, your your experiences and what stood out for you during DreamHack. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, Shroud and Dr. Disrespect, they were the special guests for the PUBG uh, Invitational where tons of the, you know, the famous teams, the center representatives, uh, Base Clan, Optic Gaming, uh, Team Liquid, all of them, uh, to the Invitational and then fight it out with Shroud and Dr. Disrespect and one team uh, as the special guests. So there were a ton of people lining up just to get uh, their stuff signed during the afternoon. I was not in that line. I was nowhere to be found. I was actually playing Hearthstone in the other room. <laughs> way that's back our boy. That's our boy. My boy. <laughs> way back at the hall, losing 
to the best player in uh in I think in the in the US, which is Amnesiac. Anyway, oh, wow. so so day two, that was the uh, day two was gone. I was I was uh, I lost my last uh, match, so I, I have to go home, or rather back to the uh, back to the Airbnb, and I saw the PUBG area closing down, but Doc was still there taking pictures with just a few people. There were very few people at this point because the whole convention is closing down. Ooh. So I went and approached Doc, and yeah. here's the thing: he's very very welcoming. Uh, he just he just looked at him and said, "Hey, what's up?" I was like, "Hey, Doc. Uh, um, um, can you can you do a shout out for the Filipino PUBG community?" They, they look at me really funny and said, "Well, you can tell it's, if it's really funny because of his glasses." <laughs> like it's <what> said. <laughs> Wait, I never saw this. Do you have audio, Harold? Yeah, there is, dude. Yeah. I've, I've watched there this. There is audio. I, I encourage you guys to check it out. I don't want to. I don't want to take all the glory. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to take yeah. Miko P's glory. Watch the Where? video on yeah, Facebook.com. I, I got slash super Miko starstruck. P. I got I super see, starstruck. Right, hold on. He even has one with with uh, with uh, Shroud. C nine. Yeah. So Miko P, yeah, keep going, man. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he said, "What? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, um, can you do a shout out for the players? And I'm from the Philippines. Uh, there's a PUBG community there. I was wondering if you can do a shout out for them. It was like, oh, oh, sure, fine, fine." Then, uh, so I had, so uh, I reached out to him. He was on the stage. I reached out my my GoPro. Good thing I had the microphone attached on. And uh, yeah, he he said the stuff that you saw in the video. And uh, more than that, I'm really glad that he, you know, he added a bit of uh, you know his usual thing in there about the attack, attack, attack. And it really, and uh, I'm just happy that the the you know the, the local community saw it and uh, they liked it. Yeah. Dr. Wow. D is really funny. That guy is, yeah. is hilarious. Yep. So it's awesome that you managed to, to get him on, on video. And you know, it, it's great that he was so nice about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was so game. Uh, after the convention, um, I saw him walking down the hall. I just called, hey, Doc, thanks. It was, uh, he was in his bag and uh, did this something like, you know, he <laughs> smiled, threw a peace sign, and then went off his way he had a he also had a, some security with him so i'm kind of afraid to <laughs> approach, approach and get a picture yeah. i mean you know like you had one of your own mg was probably behind you right like the whole time <laughs> um well he wasn't there so oh, uh, yeah. i, I didn't have the money out. to fly him in so oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome okay so, okay, so how, I, uh, I wanted to find out how Oh, sorry. Did you have? Yeah, keep going. If you have more to say, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, uh, no problem. Uh, about uh, Shroud. Yeah. Actually, Shroud is a funnier story because, so, so the dog went off, right? The 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 yeah. stage was closing down. The dog went off, and then I saw Shroud. I was like, uh, should I try to get Shroud to sign up? Because unlike Doc, Shroud, you can visibly see the people. Uh, surrounding Shroud, he has his, I think it's manager, some <laughs> security guys, and he's then... shrouded by people. Yeah, you know, Gee. he's a really high... <laughs> good one, good one. <laughs> okay, so... So I was really... Uh, I was really uh, hesitant to approach him, and I did. I just walked away, and then... It, it, kind of, it suddenly dawned to me that, hey, I, I, I probably won't have any chance like this, so... Mm -hmm. I went back. Gotta do it again. And he was really... Uh, said like he's gonna leave. I mean, you can see it on the video. He has, he has, he has everything with him. He's gonna go off to his hotel. And uh, I spotted a group of kids. So these are like your typical uh, young kids with their mouse pads and their uh, other shroud, uh, I guess, shirts. They want to get shroud. It's signed by shroud. And they were like the only group of kids standing on the corner. They were like really waiting eagerly for him. And uh, what I did was. I slowly made my way to the back of the kids, so I <laughs> landed with the children. Not, not yeah, to be mistaken <laughs> as a pedophile. Just with, sneaking in. With, with, without any evil intention. <laughs> no evil intention go. at all. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's looked like, it looked like I just fell in line. And I guess for someone looking at, looking at our group for the first time, it seems like I'm the chaperone of these kids. Anyway, <laughs> that made it easier to approach Shroud. So, so they were like, hey, Shroud, can you sign up for stuff? And Shroud was 
Trent managed to stop, and then he signed all of their stuff. And gonna and disappoint then he looked... the children. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then finally he looked at me and said, "Hey, what's up?" And then I was like, "Wow, okay." I, I really got to talk to him and said, and then I told him, uh, "Yeah, can you do a shout out for the you know, Filipino PUBG community?" I said, "Yeah, sure." And then I rolled it, and then that's how I got the clip. Oh, nice. that's awesome! That's that awesome. is so dope. He, he's, if I recall correctly, he's he's not that tall, right? He's kind of like a short Jewish man. Oh, oh yeah, he, he is. Uh, he's short and thin. Oh, okay. And, uh, I guess. I guess uh, very good at video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really good. <laughs> 2018 millennial. Yeah. And the thing is, it belies the the deepness in his in his voice. You know, it, it kind of masks the fact that he's he's not of, of large stature. Because when you hear him, he's like, oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go to school oh, yeah, yeah. right now. It, it, and drop it sounds very TV. alpha, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Will work for games in the chat says, oh, my God. Koya, bata na po ako. Ano po yung isang head? Ano po yung isang head? So we're, but, we're talking uh, about, uh, you know, the events you've been able to go to. Uh, and yeah, your, your content creation. Earlier, you mentioned you do photography and videography. How did you get into that? Okay. Um, my okay. So let's go with the videographer first, since it's the newer it's a newer thing that I've been trying. Um, oh, okay. Videography. I'm not really. I guess you can say skilled. I've tried making um, decent videos, and I realized that I don't have the the you know the art history for it but i did videos anyway just right do just tried doing videos anyway and up until now i'm still learning so there's that um for photography i have actually photography is a weirder story so you know anime conventions <laughs> anyone been to one uh anime. not i <laughs> okay well if you got so if you... uh okay so sense. yeah mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead Oh yeah, I've been I've been to the small like a really small one in um, in SMX. I just forgot what it was called. Wait, it's which like, which one is this? Though? Anime got, Con? No, no, anime it con? wasn't Anime Con. No, that would have been bigger. Uh... It was like a small time. It was like only one conference hall. It was because my sister was uh, had a booth there. She was okay. doing uh, commission art. But anyway, yeah. Ooh. All right. So if you go to the anime convention, you will see a lot of cosplayers, right? Yes. So Ooh. in two thousand. In 2008, in 2008, uh, if you go to a cosplay convention with your, you know, your run-of-the-mill digital camera, mm -hmm. they'll be more than glad to post for you and say, okay, hi, we'll mm -hmm. post for mm -hmm. you. You can take your picture and then you'll happily be on your way. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is the SLRs started popping up. So, oh, yeah, that's true. So, for example, you're like a group of guys trying to take... Uh, uh, a picture of your favorite cosplay character, they will turn to the guy with the SLR. Mm -hmm. And me with my poor, uh, I guess it's like 4 or 8 megapixel camera, was like, hey, that's unfair. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how, and that's how I started to get into photography. So I got uh... my SLR, and mm -hmm. uh, I got my first lens, and uh, I realized that, hey, uh, I like this. Nice. Especially once I bought my first uh, 50 millimeter prime lens, that Damn. changed everything. Ooh. What was your <clears throat> what, what's what what body did you get? I got the I think it was 40D by that time. 450D, 450D. Jesus it's Christ. like the super duper entry level can camera. Now for context, I think the latest now is like uh, I don't know, 800, <laughs> 800, 800D. 800 super high tech now. I don't know. This is like it's one of those like eight eight mark D something uh, eight something. Eight mark D four prime super. I don't, I don't know. Sony. <laughs> Sony. 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 Are you still using Canon Canon stuff or? Oh, yeah, are you still using Canon? Oh yeah, uh, I stuck with Canon ever since, but not because of you know the high tech technology or the good branding or because the pros use it. It's because it's the one that felt comfortable in my hand. I was trying, I was choosing between it and an icon, and it just happened that the the four fifty D fits my hand better. Mm -hmm. So I bought it. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. I think 
the the people in Canon know how to do user interface better than the other brands. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here. Yeah, they, they first put in the hand. Yeah, yeah. Can- Canon knows mm-hmm. how to put a D in your hand. All right. Uh, <laughs> Great. I like the feeling of that D in my, my hand. Oh, no. D-pad. What have I done? What have I done? All right. Oh, boy. Uh, and that's awesome. So, and then since then, have you been able to take uh, all, the, all the photos you've wanted at, at the anime conventions? Well, not really, since everyone got their own SLR and you can't distinguish which one's which. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry. Eventually, uh, I just uh, stopped going to conventions altogether and just attended uh, you know, cosplay theme photo shoots. That's where I got a bit of exposure in uh, portrait photography. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that my, I'm not really good at this. I mean, my girlfriend's also a photographer. She's a stellar portrait photographer. You'll see the difference. It's like, uh, you know, it's like bronze rank versus uh, platinum <laughs> challenger. <laughs> Something like that. that. That's our gap. But what I did, what I did realize over the course of the years is that uh, I enjoy event photography more. I like the photojournalistic approach, which is mm-hmm. a you know a cool way of saying that uh, you just take events as they happen. You don't don't make an effort to choreograph anything. Yeah, yes, do yeah. your own. Yeah. Your own I mean, um, yeah, we, we all start practicing. somewhere, though. Yeah, that is true. True. Yeah, you just gotta grind, Mikopi. You just gotta keep. Uh, you just gotta keep shooting those Genjis. Eventually, eventually you get a headshot. <laughs> all those Genjis and all those Mercies. Oh man, that's Over. so cool. And uh, you know, has so obviously the gaming came first, and you know, you were able to blend in your love for for gaming with your newfound love for photography and videography. How, where has that taken you recently? Well, um, to be honest. Uh... It hasn't really taken me quite far, but I was able to enjoy all of the events that I uh, had the opportunity to cover. I mean, all of the energy, the crowd, the hype, the challenge of actually uh, trying to capture those moments, you know, when the crowd is go cheer- is cheering, or the face yeah. of the players when something went wrong, or just uh, small snippets of, you know, just people getting together and having fun. Um, it's a really rewarding experience. Oh man, that's, that's yeah. that sounds so great. And you know, uh, guys, do you have any other questions? Because I'm gonna slowly lead into Nico's favorite game. <laughs> I got. I just I just wanna ask. So you did mention that you competed in DreamHack Austin. Am I correct for Hearthstone? Right. Uh, I competed badly. Yeah, but, yeah, I did. But you beat. <laughs> but. For those of you who are watching right now, he actually beat a streamer, a fellow streamer by the name of Ali Straza. So oh, talk yeah. us through. Talk us through. Talk us through that. I mean, what was the like, uh, like pre, before you, before you fought, and then while in the match, and then after when you when you had the, that five seconds of fame on the big screen, <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you were shaking her hand, you're like, oh, nice game, yeah. Talk us through that. Come on. Okay, okay. So, I almost <laughs> lost by default. <laughs> what? Wow. Are you serious? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's start in the middle. I almost lost by default. For like five minutes, I was sitting on the on the desk, mm-hmm. waiting for my opponent. I know her name is Alstraza. I know she's a famous streamer. Where is she? So I was sitting on my table. I think it was number forty-four. For like five minutes and I was thinking hey maybe I can get a default win (laughs) this girl girl didn't show up (laughs) meanwhile on the other side in the feature match area where all the VIPs are seated is Alistraza waiting for her opponent and probably also on her way to getting a a default win hey maybe I can get a default win (laughs) 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 and and uh and yeah, so I asked around, uh, I asked the organizer, hey, uh, how long do I have to wait to get my default win? And the organizer <laughs> was like, who are you playing against? Um, Alice Raza. And he, he, he looked at me funny, he was like, Alice over there, the feature match area. <laughs> the VIP wait, area. So you were, you were at the wrong place or she was at the wrong place? She's Apparently. always at the right place. 
<laughs> uh, Diego, when, you, when you're when you're when you're Ali Straza, you are never a throw. Never a throw. <laughs> never. Yes, I know. I know they're gonna never. Like, like, but the thing is, what if she was at the wrong place? But they, what if they? Yeah, what if she, you were at the right place? And what did they? Let's say for whatever reason, they give the okay. default of it to her. But you were at the right place, and she was in the wrong place. That's where Miku P well, ends up winning by default because of a technicality. <laughs> I was, look, it says right here, match area one. Uh, I'll, I'll probably get burned burned alive in, in Twitch chat if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get mobbed on Twitter. <laughs> like, he should have lost because he, he's not Alex <laughs> Okay, but but yeah, in, in case that. Oh, to be honest, in case that happened, the mere fact that I, you know, I'm just, I just feel so lucky to be playing against this professional, famous player. If I get a default win, I just say, can I just play the match with her? Doesn't matter. Uh, forget about the the default win. I just want to experience, you know, just playing with a pro. Yeah, it's kind of like playing against Karaku. It was scary, but at the same time, you're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I can beat her, and then she just beats you, and you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> but in your case, you beat her, so that's good for you. Oh yeah, yeah. I did manage to to beat her, but I thought to to be honest, uh, that's just the icing on the cake. The experience itself is the the reward. I mean, Ali is very kind. She is very nice, actually. I managed to talk to her a few times after the after the tournament. I even got her uh, on video. I asked Those. her. I, I should. I probably should, should be making that video too. You should make that video. <laughs> Everybody loves it, Ali it, Straza. It, it, it's, yeah, it's basically a compilation of uh, tips on how to become a better player that I ask from uh, you know the the players that I can find around the area. Awesome. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I managed to. Yeah, I did, I did manage to beat her. But you know, it's uh, I got to face Ali. That's. Even yeah. if I lost uh, zero three, I, I was like, yes. exactly. So real quick, I want to go to the chat. Uh, Daniel, aka DJ Leo, says uh, Shred seems nice, and he lo he labs you. Uh, <laughs> also, Sekichu showing you some love. Uh, hey, Sekichu. Hi, DJ. Hi, Say. Thanks for dropping uh, by. Vittorio is also in the chat. Vittorio three thousand. Thank you for coming back. And uh, yeah, so Miko. We're talking a lot about Hearthstone, and like you should have a cough switch or something. Sorry, uh, Nico. We're talking a lot about Hearthstone, and okay. you know, it, it's obviously a game that you you quite enjoy and and, and are very passionate about. Uh, we know there's a lot of huge upcoming Hearthstone, uh, you know, content and events. There there are a bunch of events coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, do you want to talk a little? Maybe you want to talk a little bit about it. You know, and maybe how our country. And, and our region may, may factor in. Is that, is that uh, something you want to talk about? Okay, so the the big news locally, and I think this should be celebrated a lot here in the Philippines, is that we once again have our representatives for the Hearthstone Global Games 2018, and Yay! they are the same Woo! lineup as last year. Yeah! <laughs> oh. Woo! Everybody oh, yeah! the same people! Woo! -hoo -hoo! Let me let me throw up. Let me throw that up on screen for the video viewers. Yes, mm -hmm. there we go. Yes, there we go. Four of the five Power Rangers. <laughs> yep. Who's the fifth one? A brand uh, new Miko P. Uh, Miko P. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, he's the Green Ranger. I'm sorry. He's supposed to be the sixth well, one. There, I think there was one, one of the Power Ranger titles had only four. I think it was the, the Dino, Dino Force or something like that. Dino Force was... Oh, yeah, that's four. Um... It was the Black wow. Ranger. Let's, yellow. let's not get hung up on Power Rangers and let's let me, let's let me go be talking about <laughs> <laughs> the technicality on the show, you know? Power <laughs> Rangering. Seriously, sir. Uh, apparently, in Ninja Storm, there was initially three and then they had two Thunder Rangers come down. Okay, so Miko P. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Miko P. <laughs> Uh, oh. So you know, t tell us a little bit about these uh, representatives of our of our fine fine country. Oh, uh, where do I start? Okay, so Stas, Stas is the anchor, and for a good reason. Um, when you're online, and you know, Stas is your friend, you'll see him pop up. Uh, I think it's either late nights or early mornings, just for a couple of hours. But you'll notice that rank beside uh, beside his name 
just keeps getting up. Until at the end of the season, you'll say, Whoa, we stopped, we stopped on 100? What happened? I'm still stuck at the rank 4. <laughs> so, yeah, Staz is, uh, I guess he's the, yeah, he is the most celebrated uh, local Hearthstone player. And uh, for a good reason, he won WESG, had a really big prize pool. And ever since then, he's been uh, on a roll. Recently, he just got second place in, uh, I think it's HCT Taipei, only getting beaten by yeah. uh, Switch. Switch. Yep. Hello, Countryman Switch. Uh, and and more than that, Switch. he's been playing for a really long time. <laughs> and I guess that cemented both his reputation and, of course, own, own this play, play skill as a competitive player. So, yeah. That's for the anchor. Oh yeah, he plays almost always exclusively control decks. So if you are going up against Taz, make sure you have a good uh, a good lineup against control. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Aggro. Oh, oh, oh. Really one last thing. I, I completely forgot. I became a really big fan of Staz during the last match of the WESG tournament where he's up against Orange. Orange, of course, one of the most best and most consistent yeah. players in the world. That Reno Mage Mirror is uh, actually it's a, it's a stuff of legend. It should be studied because while both players didn't play perfectly, it, show, it shows how uh, Staz approaches the overall matchup. He, you can see how he recovers from the minor mistakes when he's at a disadvantage and how he turns the game around. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's like classic, uh, you know, classic science right there. Mm -hmm. That's so uh, worthy of studying. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Uh, and who else do we have, Miko? Who else do we have on this? What roster? about Karakute? Oh, Karakute. Oh, yeah. He he beat he beat all of us back at your FSG. Yeah. She was <laughs> so crazy. This... Oh yeah. She, she oh. is. Next to actually next to Stas, I'll probably I'll probably peg her as the uh, best player uh, in, the, in the roster. Yeah, because because awesome. she's she's really dominant. And here's the thing: she, I think she is not affected by nerves whatsoever. She just plays huh. constantly. You know, mm -hmm. she's just herself when she plays. Yeah, you won't see her. I mean, she's expressive, but uh, it's not like. Uh, you know, you can read her differently when something uh, happens. She just remains calm, or you know, remains expressive. But you can't really get a good grasp if she makes a misplay or she does something wrong, stuff like that. Also, she has been very uh, dominant locally. When you join the local parasite gatherings and tournaments, chances are you can see Karakit either in she's first gonna be place, there. She's top gonna... eight. Yeah, she's, she's, she's gonna... gonna be there. She's gonna be just... placing high. She's just racking up all the wins. And I think that's yep. very good because the thing is, you can't like a lot of people don't know this for Hearthstone is that you can't really practice uh, tournament uh, practice for a tournament by playing ladder. You have to like have sparring partners. You have you need to have experience like whether it be mock tournaments, fireside gatherings, or even just finding someone to play with nonstop and telling him, oh, you play these decks, I'll play these decks, and let's try let's try uh, making it work or like let's try tweaking it or something like that. So yeah, that's how you prepare, right? Am I right, Nico? Oh yeah, that that is very true. Not only is uh, playing with a team or with a friend speed up the whole process because in ladder you can you just you just have to pray that you get the right matchup, mm -hmm. and then you have to pray really hard that this player is good, that he will give you the, the data that you need or the you know the the challenge that you need, and then even if it, that happens. Uh, the other player might get unlucky. You might get unlucky. You might not have the matchup data that you wanted out of the experience. So playing with a friend expedites the process by a mile. So that's why you see um, all the Hearthstone is a very individual game. It boils down to, uh, to just one player's performance. A lot of the top players are in are in the same teams as the other top players. Mm -hmm. Because that way they can just keep uh, keep improving each other, improving their lineups, discovering new tech that they can keep secret from the other players, and uh, basically just uh, you know it's like power leveling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. I, I did I did actually want to ask you a little bit more about this because you know recently there was 
uh, a story online. I think I found it on Reddit about the UCLA Bruins and their uh, esports team, specifically their Hearthstone team, their three-man Hearthstone okay. team. And you know, it mentions a lot about their their theory crafting, which apparently is very important in in Team Hearthstone. Uh, and you know, the fact that they they coach each other regularly while they're playing, kind of like some would say, some would almost call it backseat gaming. But at the same time, you know, when you're at that level of competitiveness, <laughs> yeah. every input I mean, during preparation has to be vital, right? Okay. Yeah, we did. We didn't. Uh, we didn't. We didn't hear sorry, you. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't catch you the last part. Yeah. Oh no! So I was saying like so every every bit of of input and and feedback and and uh you know all the decisions that go into to making uh you know the, the next move in hearthstone has to be important and that's that's probably why you you see team-based hearthstone becoming such a you know bigger thing now and hmm. also uh, you also have to consider the players biases i mean players who consider themselves good are still open to criticism, criticisms of other players mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, they respect, and, and it's very essential because everyone, every one of us believes that we're good, <laughs> especially if we win. It's justified, right? Yeah. But the thing is, uh, if, for example, if everyone watches the replay of their games enough times, they mm -hmm. will see that you know there are some small decisions that are made during that game that would have made. Uh, it would have made a bigger difference had they done it. it. It would have made them win faster. It would have made them win the game if they're on the losing side. It may have made their opponent think differently and play differently. Those kinds of stuff. So if you're playing alone, chances are those things won't get pointed at you. That's why it's very important to have, you know, the backseat gamers at the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, backseat gamers uh, at the back. Backseat gamers. <laughs> team as coaches or as support group <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so uh tell us more about the the last two uh <clears throat> when it comes to team philippines and the hearthstone global games w let's talk about okay, waning so, moon okay ah. waning moon is uh, okay so uh a bit of a story uh i was asked to interview um the big mac eden one of all, also one of the hgg um candidates for the Philippines because he won a really uh, uh, the Christmas Hearthstone Championship in Singapore so that's like another 2500 uh, Singapore dollars in his bank account Jeez. so mm. so we managed, so we get to talk a bit about the, the ACG representatives that won and he thought that uh, it's Wayne Moon who will get the cut because remember Staz has is no very well known Kara Cute is also very well known, but Waning Moon, he didn't really campaign all that much during the campaign period. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, yeah, you 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 didn't you don't you didn't see a Waning Moon post or Waning Moon video. Agronicus mm -hmm. actually has to make his own <laughs> his his Waning Moon campaign just to uh, campaign for for Dustin, and that was really good. But the thing is. I was the one who thought that it was Chalk who will actually get the get cut off. Oh, because same. Waning Moon, he has a how do I, how do I say? It? He already has a legacy in the competitive scene in Hearthstone ever since I think 2015. He mm -hmm. is the player who has the mo the most number of Gosu Cup wins and if you remember back during the days around 2015 2016 yeah. Gosu Cup was the place to be before Battlefire was around. Yep. So everyone goes to Gosu Cup and not just everyone, that's everyone of the best players uh, yeah. in the world, and in the world, we, yeah. and all of those <laughs> finish, and all of those finishes, uh, coupled with his, uh, he also has a stellar local performance, and recently, of course, he got uh, he got into HCT Sydney. Although he didn't perform uh, as well as we'd expect, he still got in the top 16 of HCT, of, uh, HCT Sydney. So that also cemented his reputation uh, more. So even if I think even if Dustin doesn't really campaign uh, as much as actively on Facebook or on social media, as long mm -hmm. as he keeps running, uh, doing all of those uh, you know those those big wins, just placing high in general throughout the year, he will always be in the what they call this in the uh, 
Oh yeah, in the in the in the it's a candidate. So, hello, hello, yeah, yeah, yeah everything. Yeah, we're still okay. here. I I just got an ad for McDo hotcakes on my. Uh, oh no no, uh, that was me. I sent a picture of the new breakfast meal from just for the after show. Purposes. What? Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, no, just just, just to add on on waning moon though, <laughs> just to add on waning moon. Uh, he's actually. The reason why, like, I, I voted for the guy because I got to watch him when we had our the SEA qualifiers here in the Morocco Theater back in 2016 or maybe 15. Mm -hmm. Not sure. 2016. Uh, 2016, yeah. Yep. He did a good performance. It's just a chalk at that time was actually really, really good. And he was, he, he was, he was set to face chalk. I'm like, oh, that was a bad. Damn it, he he got unlucky. I, if he was picked with someone else, they would have met. Both of them would have met in the finals. But then, yeah, he's also one of the OG uh, Hearthstone pro players. Like when when Hearthstone first started out in 2014, he was also he was already one of those uh, pro players along with Staz and Chalk and I actually forgot the others. But then, yeah, those were the three that I I always heard, like from the from the Hearthstone community. Like, oh yeah, those three players, we should we should, <laughs> um, yeah, they're gonna represent us in the World Cup. But then none of them none of them got their visas. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you, <laughs> Embassy. Well, at least we are now more esports friendly in the recent years. Yes, so the are. government is actually making efforts to send players uh, to their respective uh, tournaments, you know, to bring more glory and uh, attention to the Fil to Philippine esports. So that's a great. Also, uh, I've also voted for Waning Moon because I I had the I guess I felt I had the honor opportunity to play against him and I saw how really good he is first hand. Very so very like super duper good. He will I was uh, how do you call this? I was uncomfortable the whole the whole experience because he keeps putting in positions that in Hearthstone that uh you'd uh you know it'll be hard to recover from. He will derail all of your plays. Yeah. Oh wow. A lot of a lot of the that's what I noticed with this lineup as well is that the three of those are very dominant players. They play very like dominant. They love getting board presence. They love clearing your board and just assuming dominance over you. Mm -hmm. As compared to Chalk, where Chalk is just really like really fast. He just wants you he just wants to to destroy you, take you out in like in in like five or six turns. <laughs> Chalk, Chalk speaking of Chalk, uh, Chalk is the pirate king. So he oh, is yeah. very famous for Pirate Warrior because during that time he really just used Pirate Warrior to get into High Legend, yeah. and that was an awesome thing to behold. It, it it made everyone believe in aggro once again. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Guys of so, King. Okay, so yeah, as, uh, as I was uh, talking about earlier, so I, I thought Chuck was the weakest link. Not because he is a bad player, he is really, really super good, and uh, he's up there with the with the others. But it's more because of his uh, recent performances. Um, he had a, I think his most notable um, local performance was at the Mesa, where he got into where he didn't really go. I think he got into top eight. Yeah. But but beyond that, uh, beyond that. Um, he had a, I guess, I, I guess, I, I had a lack of uh, good, fin good finishes. But here's the thing: Chalk will always be uh, in the running for as a candidate because of the legacy that he put during that Meralco Theater uh, mm -hmm. tournament. Remember how all the crowd was cheering for him, yeah. and how and how he looked at Nilio after he he managed to draw the game rather than lose oh, it. Oh yeah. That yeah. was that was you guys you guys should have been there. It was just magical because the thing is, me and my friends we were there, so yeah. it was at at that point where Nilio was just basically bombarding him because he built this board early on compared compared to um, Chalk where he was just basically like uh, I don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> all of a sudden, when he gets him to zero, uh, I think it was one of the one of his one of the procs i think killed yeah, yeah i think for the leper gnome and super just 
just by chance, Nelio's health was also a two. So as he killed, as he killed, um, as he killed uh, Chalk, he triggered the leper gnome. So it, just, it was just a draw. So they just looked at each other. That famous, you just look at each other, you smile. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Let's go. Let's do it again. And that, yeah, was, that was just hilarious. Like everyone was just laughing. And we were like clapping really loud. Like, yeah, do yes. it. Again. <laughs> that, that was a testament to how good Chalk plays. He, ter- he forced a game state where Nilio absolutely had no choice but to end the game in a draw. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. It's like bo- the, the chess thing, like Bobby Fischer and that guy, right? <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> it's like the Bobby Fischer chess game. You could treat Hearthstone as, mm-hmm. a, as a chess game because the thing is, most of us, when we're going again in, in tournaments, you already know what the opponent is bringing. You already know what kind of archetype they're bringing, so you mm-hmm. already have an idea what cards he'll play. And then the only thing that will make a difference is like what four or five cards where they're, they, or no, sorry, like one or three cards. Yeah. <laughs> where it's just gonna be tech tech cards. Like for example, they add like a Harrison Jones just to destroy your weapon or something like that. And mm-hmm. for them to get card draw or like they add specific components that that really like they don't do well in ladder but when you put them in tournament play they're like wow these these cards are gonna destroy uh, these cards are magic yeah it's <laughs> magic exactly yeah okay so, so uh, yeah uh, all right you first okay okay so um now so yeah but beyond that uh after you know, after that hype, um, he got into the he got into last year's team. Uh, they did they did well. Their performance was really good. And then after that, uh, he I think he sort of went on a hiatus. I think. Yeah, I think on a hiatus. Although he he went he went to streaming that helped cemented his uh, reputation locally uh, a lot. But uh, again, he stopped. And then for a while, uh, we haven't heard. Much about him, and during this time, uh, players like I Am the Table and uh, Switch, they they had their big finishers. Especially I Am the Table. I personally think uh, Tyrone is the like the Rookie of the Year for 2017 because of all the achievements locally that he did, and uh, also, he also beat Chalk convincingly in a 3-2 matchup that was wow, that's really good. <laughs> and uh, of course, Switch. Uh, these, if any of these two. Managed to get into the um, into the candidate pool, there might be a chance that Chalk might not make it this year. So um, the team really has he really has to perform a, a stellar this year, both as a team, as part of the Philippine team, and um, as a individual player, in order to get those, in order to be in the running, rather in order to secure a spot again for the next year. But then again, I mean, he's very famous. You, you saw the you saw his campaign video. If you add that to the mix, that's also a big plus. And um, personally, he's a very likable guy. He's fun to be around, and you know, really good guy. Guy's an artist, by the way. Just, just like uh, that Miko P guy. Here he's a like, yeah, like the Miko P guy. Yeah, well, although that Miko P guy yeah. is not as cool. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say that. I think he's, mm. I think he's plenty cool. I think he's like Eskimo cool. Pretty dope. You know? He's a dope, <laughs> dope guy. Very okay, dope uh, guy. Okay, I really do appreciate it. Okay, back to Shock. So, if Shock can, uh, for this year until 2019, get, for example, that WESG 2018 win, okay, guaranteed. Or, or even, or even a top four finish that would yeah, guarantee even top, him. If that's up for, and then uh, for the whole for the whole other major tournaments, he also plays tie. Then okay, he'll be in the lock again for yeah. for another year. That's awesome. true. Awesome. Okay, so uh, what do you think are our chances at the HGGs, the Hearthstone Global Games? What, how do you okay, think? Okay, we'll win fare? the whole thing. Oh, there it is. Whoa. Calling it now, Miko P pointing past the fence, saying it's gonna be a home run. I believe. Yeah. Miko P, I believe. Hashtag I believe. I just, I, no, I so, just so, want to be. So, okay. <laughs> HGG Grand Finals, you yeah. will see our flag up there as the champion. Nice. That is a bold nice. statement. That bold. is awesome, dude. You, you want to you wanna back that up with like any anything or are you just going to say, oh, I'm just going to do this? That's it. 
Oh, um, because personally, I've faced three of the four players. Um, and I mean, from tournament, from experience, I know that players, after you know, facing losses and after facing losses and uh, learning, uh, they they always tend to go. They always end up being better than they were before. And also, it also, it helps a lot that we're also building the same lineup. I mean, they these guys are close and they're all hard workers. Yeah, they're all friends. They're actually all friends. Uh, that also helps a lot too. And yeah. more than that, I'm just I'm just rooting for the Philippines in general. I mean, I I'm a big believer that our local uh, competitive scene, the competitive players here, if for example uh, we can just round them all up. Put them in a gaming house, all sponsored, everything provided for, and all they have to do is compete and play Hearthstone. I believe they will dominate the world. Oh mm -hmm. man, that sounds they're, that sounds like a adapted. really awesome dream, Miko P. Thank you for funding that. Uh, so, uh, Power Rangers, <laughs> you know, you know, you heard it here. Go to Miko P's house; he'll fund everything. Yeah. If, 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 if only I, I can do it, I will do it. But at the moment, uh, I'm I'm struggling to get my next gig. Someone hire me, please. <laughs> Facebook.com <laughs> slash Miko P. Hire him. I need to pay for my next coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, we all, life, right? Life we hard. all know that we struggle. All. Are you part of the... Okay, like from from a media guy to one another. Are you part of the ICAP group? <laughs> the independent artists and... Uh, are you in the creative and advertisement? Oh, unfortunately... Group? Unfortunately, no. Uh, okay. We'll hook you up. We'll, I'm going to we'll link it later. to you. Just... You, you can get a lot him. of gigs there. Just add them. No, All right. I, I don't think, think I can add. I think it's someone else who's part of that. Okay, we'll it's like it just out. a public thing. Everyone's there. So it's, just, it's like one of those uh, law of averages thing. Just put your bid it there if you get it. Uh, good for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll message it on Facebook. All right. Miko all right. Pima, thank you so much for all the insight. Like this has been wonderful. Do you have anything to add before we brush up on some other gaming news and then end the show? Do you, you want to say anything else about the HGGs and stuff? Um, what else? Uh, it would be also be great if uh, more people can get into competitive Hearthstone. It is not as intimidating as uh, you'd think, especially on a local level. It's not like you know, you'll be facing other people who will like is out to kill you. Um, rather, it's a really friendly, competitive environment. Plus, uh, I'm sure, there's time commitment, and if you can make time, I, it would be you'd, you'd probably find it to your liking. Awesome, yeah, and you know, awesome. like like Miku yeah. B said, you know, you can you can butt heads and head butts, and yeah. uh, you know, get to get to shake hands and meet a lot of the local, you know, local Hearthstone players. The worst that'll happen is you'll make a friend. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know, find find that's the true. closest fireside gathering that's happening the soonest. Head on over there or message us. If we get good feedback, we'll do another yeah. one, you know, because we, we, we don't know. We should do we don't know. No, we know we're, we're, no, we're going to do one. We're going to do one for sure. We are yeah, definitely going to make another one. Yeah, because uh, we hear, we hear that Miko P guy is going to sponsor all the drinks. Yeah. So we, we, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's going well, to be all booze. I could probably do it. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's just gonna be all beer, all beer and Hearthstone, and uh, maybe some chicharron. Uh, I can sponsor free, free flowing water. Oh, oh man, dude, that's look at so cool. the look at the look at Mr. Bucks of Plenty over here, sponsoring well, free flowing <laughs> water. <laughs> hey, hey, water ain't cheap. Water Good ain't water cheap, isn't man. cheap. Good water okay, ain't we'll, cheap. Evian, we'll go he's gonna sponsor then. us. Evian, okay? Okay, well, I'll go for alcohol then. <laughs> Cheaper. I'm gonna just get I mean, what's the what's that really easy vodka that's so oh, that's, which one it's Zima? the one in the it's the clear bottled one the clear bottled vodka the really cheap one uh, abs uh, uh, no. absolute absolute I have a bottle uh, I don't know uh, is it the bar it. you mean the bar the bar there we go <laughs> <laughs> it's the like this I still have the bottle in my room, dude. I got dude, like that's... an unopened bottle. It's <laughs> how many years old, dude? I don't that's know, man. Probably vinegar now or something. That was probably yeah. like back from when like I used to binge on mini stop chicken, the mutant oh. mini stop chicken. <laughs> that sounds good. 
so real quick, guys, going to the chat. We got DJ Leo in the chat saying, "I can." Oh no, he's saying, "Make a friend." Damn. Yeah, man, make a friend. Head on over to Hearthstone Fireside Gathering. Sometimes you'll see DJ Leo there. You never make, know. Make more than friends. Hmm? Yeah. I mean, more friends. More. Make yeah. Friends. Yeah. yeah. Mikopi, don't tell them what, what happened with us. Uh, more than friends. Uh, Gwen in the chat says, hi. Hey, Gwen. Hey, Gwen. Hey, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, they're also saying to go to the game dev drink up. When's the next one? Is it? Is it this week? I thought it was next week. That's every second week. But well, we'll figure that out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Francis says Lumbanog. You want to sponsor some Lumbanog, Miko? <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, they're, we'll, they're we'll, we'll get the one they're... from. Uh, do you know when you guys go from Manila to Southern Tagalog region? You go yeah. to Maharlika Highway, and then somewhere when you're like two hours in, you will see all of these small stands on the road with those big Lumbanog jars. Oh, those are like yeah. those have really high alcohol content. It's borderline poisonous. Yeah, it's like ninety percent alcohol. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm Jesus so down Christ. for that. Let's okay, go. If, if I manage to, I'll, I'll go buy one once we, if I, if I manage to go to the province and then we'll have it at the, I don't know, Fireside Gathering. <laughs> like, we're all freaking wasted in the Fireside Gathering. Like, Grand Finals, let's go. Here, have Welcome one. Welcome to the tavern. <laughs> you didn't call it a tavern for no reason. Oh, we don't, we don't we should have, we should have like in the finals. Okay, the loser of each match We'll drink one shot of Lumbanog. And it's or, a best of five, so you like race to three. Oh, that's that'd be good. And then we'll, we'll give some to the casters too. Yeah, we'll give oh, some yeah. to the casters. Oh, yeah. Like, ah, the they think they're drinking water, but nope, it's Lumbanog. That'd be oh. awesome. Oh, that's still Gwen. Oh, Gwen says it is cheap. Okay, yeah, Lumbanog is the best. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cheap. Let's do it. All right, guys. Yeah. So we're going to wrap things up with uh, two small bits of news. Two tiny Nothing national, nothing on a national scale. You know who know, who who has time for that? So, real quick, guys, before before we do that, let's let's uh, oh, let's do this. Oh, let's break it down. Oh. This week in video games. Oh, there's a bit of a pause in between, but you know what, guys? It's time for this week in video games. And this week, this specific week. Uh, there's a, there a lot of local esports going on. Ain't, was, isn't that true, Mick? Ain't that true? Yes, that there true? is a lot. Last weekend was the very first Mobile Legends Professional League Philippines Grand Finals. This is the season, this is the inaugural season for, um, for the Mobile Legend, the Mobile Legends League that is starting here in our country. It's amazing. And it was, uh, it was held in the SM Mall of Asia music hall and it was going on from from saturday up to until sunday and for two days we were we saw eight teams eight teams that survived that whole five week five week season and th those were the top eight and we saw them slug it out and one came out the victor and that is ether main either i don't know ether is it ether i'd say ether, ether. I don't know. I, it's ether main they were crowned the inaugural champions of the MPL season one for 2018, it's a it was amazing. If you guys watch these guys, they were dominating. They had a impressive record of 20 and one, so they only lost Jeepers. one game for the whole five weeks. And here's the thing: if you actually check in this whole uh, grand finals, they actually sweeped everybody. They did not have any. They did not lose to any team. They dominated. All, all seven teams, and they wow. even sweeped Digital Devil Pro Great Gaming in the finals with a 3-0 clean victory. So these guys are just crazy. It's amazing. So shout out to Mineski, uh, Mineski TV, or sorry, MET Mineski um, events uh, team, events team for for you know help for producing this whole thing, and of course working with Moonton to bring in this kind of league for us and hopefully we get to see a season two yeah you know shout out yeah also shout out to our friends from Mineski you know uh we know butters uh Dennis Sirios yep. Dennis Sirios uh Denki of course uh shout out to Uncle Joy hey Uncle Joy oh, you Uncle Joy Uncle Joy forward to, for you to join us in our next fireside gathering along with Miko oh, yeah. cause, uh, cause you already know Miko's gonna join us there am I correct yeah Aren't we eating ramen with Miko? Oh, is, is that Martin? We'll, we'll have Miko there too. 
we'll have we'll have both of them. I think yeah, that's we'll better. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll work for Lolis. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, that's it was, awesome. It was a great event, an amazing event. It was a little hot. Like a lot of people were like, you know, like, how do you say that? Visually, they looked like they were like, they were like, oh, this is such a hot place. I need to drink some water. <laughs> so they were sweating. Yeah. <laughs> they were. No, not even just sweating. Like their faces, like. Because like when you go around in the country, like you you'd still sweat, but then you're like, oh, it's actually pretty breezy, but it's still hot. Yeah. But then, but this one, it's like people were like, oh my god, I'm parched. I need oh, to man. drink. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that the event was a huge success, and you know, uh, looking forward to more Philippine esports to come. Yes, definitely. So congratulations to Ether Main, and of course, Ether Main for winning the whole thing and winning about I think. Thirty-two thousand and eighty-four U.S. dollars. Wow. I'm not sure. Wow. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of. That's a lot of money. It's a lot and, of rent money. It's a, a lot of. It's a lot of rent money. A lot of, money, a lot of sponsorship, baby. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna upgrade their phones to like Samsung S nines now, because I'm pretty sure they have money now to buy it. That's awesome. <laughs> I wanna. I wanna give a small shout out to to MG in the background. I think yeah. he's playing Clash of Clans right now. <laughs> he's playing Clash of Clans. He's swiping. <laughs> he's playing it. <laughs> he's playing it. He's playing it. Yeah, and also shout out to MET again. Uh, what what an amazing show. I I wasn't there. I watched the whole I watched the whole thing on Facebook and on Twitch. Yeah, that was a really great coverage. Shout out to everybody there. Rockheart, Aki, uh, Butters, of course. Butters, shout out to my boy. Uncle Joy, I didn't see him there. Adrian Go, a friend of mine. Yeah, he's actually one of the pro project managers, and congratulations on oh, yeah, on the success of your event. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's 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 basically it. Yeah, for all the right. MPS Lastly, 20. guys, in in, uh, in world gaming news, just the last bit. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not gaming news without a little bit of shade being thrown. Am I right? <laughs> right. So it, it's even sweeter when when the when a company, a development company, uh, is the one that, that, that throws out the shade, and Bethesda. Was uh you know this this article is a uh, courtesy of, of Game Tyrant, but uh yeah Bethesda was, you know very frank, about why we're not getting crossplay in in Fallout seventy six and you know turns out it's because Sony doesn't want to play nice. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, boy. but yeah, I mean, but thing is, I have a question. Like, I wanted to just do a quick discussion on this. What is your stand on the whole anti crossplay thing? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Like. I want to get your thoughts before I give mine. Like, mm -hmm. what do you guys think? I, I, I'm gonna go first because I never get to go first. Uh, yeah. I feel, <laughs> I feel I feel like this is my only time. I no, feel like Harold featuring Echo and Mick. No, so I mean, I, I really just wanted to say this first because you know, first, first. Uh, I think crossplay on any level is good because the more people you get playing a game, the one, the longer it will last. Two, mm -hmm. the more people you get to play with, and and more the more lively the the game will seem. And three, I don't want to have to choose between consoles. I'd rather just use the console or, or platform I already own and just play with other people and not have to worry about oh Diego's on PlayStation, I can't play with him, or Mix on Xbox, I can't play with him. I'm on a desktop, like. I'd rather just be able to log into any game and be like, yes, let's play right now. Whether you're playing on a controller, a Wiimote, uh, a, uh, <laughs> Joy-Cons, uh, or your mobile phone. I just want to be able to play with everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, yeah, crossplay is good. Sony, start playing nice. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for that. Oh, what about you, Miko? What do you think, man? Okay, um, I think not going for crossplay is a step backwards because that's where I mean that's where all the games are heading we we want to uh, well basically well number one it's it's not a uh, what do you call this it's counterintuitive to human interaction people will want to interact <laughs> with each other as much as possible at any given chance and you're hampering it so it it, it it does not set it's at the back of our heads it does not sit well that's why when you think of exclusivity when it comes to these gaming consoles you tend to you know be skeptical at them i know it's a business decision and sony believes that uh it will bring them a lot more profit 
but mm -hmm. it's just not fluid enough and it's just not right for uh, the way that games are being played today also it uh, it discourages um, it doesn't give it doesn't give you an incentive to or rather it makes uh, it makes your product and your company look bad because why do they want exclusives remember today is the internet age people will know and people will share info that they know no matter how wrong or right it could be yes. and when you do some crossplay and do some exclusivity where in everything else is crossplay uh people will be skeptical and they will think you oh, know uh what are they hiding why is it because their product is inferior that they want to just keep people within their <laughs> ecosystem so uh yeah that's it uh i think it's a step back for backwards for sony i think it it's a uh, well I'm, i don't really have you know excessive business experience but i think it's a bad business decision mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Also, what I believe is that if you have a great product, if it's really, really good, if your platform is really, really good, people will go into it, even if there's cross-player. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen to that. <clears throat> How about you, Mick? What do you think? Well, uh, okay. First things first, what with, with about cross-playing? Well, cross-play, uh, we mean, right, uh, 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 PC players and console players can... Play together in the same servers, right? Am I correct? Yeah, multi-platform playing. Multi-platform playing. Yes. Okay, so multi-platform playing. The thing about it, my stance again, uh, my stance on it is um, depends on what game you're you're actually um, mm -hmm. serving me. Okay, so if it's like an FPS game, first things first, I don't like cr cross play multi-platform cross playing for for FPS gaming because why? Because the thing is, PC players have an advantage in terms of in terms of um, aiming at the same time uh controller controller players or like play people playing on their xbox controller or ps4 controller they have aim assist okay so it's kind of unfair and it's it's a little hard to balance so that the thing is you might as well just leave it you just let them be in their own ways but when it's a game like this like like fallout 76 I think it's just stupid. I, I really think it's just stupid that you're not giving people the opportunity to play with other mm -hmm. platforms exactly. because this is, because it's such a, this is an open world sandbox game, where it has somewhat of a story, but at the same time you can do whatever the hell you want in a post-apocalyptic world. Why are you preventing people from doing that? Especially, why are you preventing PC players and console players from actually experiencing that together when? None of it requires a lot of extensive aiming or or anything that that gives either a PC or console the advantage over the over the other one. Yeah. Or so the mobile. Or the mobile. Yeah. Like look look what they're doing. Fortnite. Fortnite is gonna have cross platform for phone, for console, and for PC. And according to them, that's gonna be all. Those are all gonna be. Um, uh, what a cross plat multi level cross plat whatever whatever bullshit that something like that yeah but you can all play together that's the, that's the important part now and that's a shooting game that's the thing that's it just blows my mind so when then see Fallout seventy six I mean it's not a shooting game it's, <laughs> it's, it's an RPG RPG it's an RPG, and, it's an RPG. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, but I can't really. Play. I feel bad. They're not doing this, but I, at the same time, I can't play Sony because the thing is, Sony is is a powerhouse. They know that they have so. There are more Sony consoles out there in most regions than than Xbox. I mean, Xbox is the minority in the platform. Well, there's also the Switch, but then yeah, <laughs> between the two, okay? in the. Quote from who the inferior, the lesser console <laughs> from from Mr. Uh, w or GE. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna, like he just pulled it out as the lesser console, but then yeah, I mean, like when you, when you compare Xbox numbers versus PS4 numbers, there, I'm pretty sure there are more PS4 numbers than Xbox mm -hmm. in the rest of it because most of the services for Xbox are really good. And are catered to Western countries. It's a lot more convenient for them. Right? But then, well, that was like 360 or like Xbox One days. But then now with the Xbox One X, they made it more convenient for a lot of Asian players. It's just that I think it's everybody has a PS4. 
But uh, yeah. Oh, have oh, those Nick, uh, Nick, you're cutting in and out. You might you might oh. have to move a little closer to your mic. Since they they have um since they have since they know that um they have those numbers, why are they going to allow, you know, you to play with other people on Xbox or on PC when they can just cash grab you and cool you in to the PS4 family and then all I want to play you now they're gonna force you to buy another another one. That's it's really just a cash grab for them. At the end of the day it's just money. So I can't really blame them because that's a that's also a really good marketing strategy, but Come yeah. on, man. It's 2018. Everybody's yeah. cross-platform now. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, Gwen in the chat was saying, except Sony for Fortnite. Was she, was she talking about the, the, the cross-play deals? That, uh... Yeah, yeah. Um, only Xbox. Uh, Xbox. The Switch is going to have it now. Yeah. iOS has it. And PC yeah. has it. They That's all the have thing, Fortnite. Right? Who? Who's the only one? Who does? He's the only one who doesn't have it. And they don't yeah. care. Pretty sure they don't care. They're like, ah, fine. you guys can have it. <laughs> oh man, I think that that is a that is a discussion we can continue to have over the oh, coming you, weeks you because oh. you know as as events gonna listen to you develop. Mind. What's that? What was that like? <laughs> hey, <Nick? laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? Nick just stopped. Nick know, just you, stopped you talking. You were we couldn't hear you for a while, Harold. Oh, oh. we couldn't we couldn't hear you. Oh, no, so, so I was saying, like, as... to you on the quit stalling. Quit stalling. Yeah, but then, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Diego, what are your thoughts on it, though? Are you okay. against it? I'm with you on the whole, yeah. I mean, for Bethesda, I mean, for something like... The same thing with you, with me. For something like Fallout 76. I mean, okay, it's fine. Just let them cross-play. What's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you can argue that, okay, yeah, I mean, like... You know the whole you can. It's not a good idea to cross console with PC games because, yeah. of course, PC game. I mean, it's it's kind of a fact. You can actually react faster using a mouse keyboard as compared to a uh, a, a controller. controller. Yeah. So, but throwing that out of the way for a game like Fallout, I mean, why not, right? Mm -hmm. If there's PvP there, fine. Like if if people are if people are okay with like fighting people on a on a PC and they're playing console if they want to get their ass, that's their problem. But if they enjoy the thing, okay, give them what they want, right? Give the people what they want, but. Yeah, with the whole business thing, I, I don't uh, here. I don't blame Sony for making their decision. Um, it's a very business decision, and like, okay, I'll give them that. That's true. They they have, I guess, because they here they own six. From a business standpoint, why would you share the spoils if you own sixty four percent of the market share? And yeah, I mean, like, a, mm -hmm. and the quote that is also from uh, if you go to statistica dot com and if you just search in Google like how much market share. PS4 has the PlayStation has they for the, how many years they've always had the highest market share for like um, I think they even grew from last year last year they were 57% market share and then now there's 64 and then Xbox is 34 and then <laughs> Nintendo's 1% <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but like even if those numbers are could be like a bit uh, off and on or whatever yeah. I mean Sony on the right off the bat Sony is the more popular brand so I don't, I don't, I won't score in the for saying for saying that we don't want crossplay. Uh, it's normal for a business to want. It's I don't. They're not monopolizing. They're not an EA. They're they're not anti competition. I mean, what? I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with saying no. We don't want our 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 players to play with Xbox players. Um. But then again, there's is that gray area where in like, but what if it's a game like Fallout seventy six? Okay, fine, mm -hmm. maybe fine. Um, something like Fortnite. Um, I don't console crossplay, I guess. But between console to PC, that's the hard part. But what they're doing with the whole like, if you have if you logged on your Fortnite account on a Sony console, okay, you'll never be able to play anywhere else again. That I think that that's like um, how's that putting a leash on your on your consumer base, so that one I'm not okay. With. So there's a lot of there's mm -hmm. a lot of there's a lot of wrong things. There's a lot of right things. Good. Eh, there's a pros cons, but yeah, um, just something I'd like to, to <clears throat> dump on in terms yeah. of what you guys think. All right. Mhm. Mm yeah. All right. So am I clear now? Am I loud and clear? Hello. Yes, you Mike are, test. sir. Yes. Like awesome. that. All right. So yeah, uh, I think this is a topic we can go on for in the coming weeks as you know events uh, develop and and. You know, we get more details, especially you know when we, when Fortnite was 
announced to come to the Switch. And, you know, people were complaining about your Epic Games account being locked to a specific console. You know, Gwen actually just reminded me and linked me to the to the article from, from The mm-hmm. Verge, you know. Uh, you're going to get technical issues like this. And it's going to be inherent in when you try and go cross-platform. So it, there is more to talk about, uh, although we are out of time now. And... Mm-hmm. You know, we do want to get to the after show with Miko P because I want to find out what goes on with Miko P. Uh, so <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna put a pin on this and we're gonna we're gonna wait and see what happens with with cross platforming, spe- specifically with Fallout seventy six uh, in the near future. And you know the and we're looking forward to hopefully the gaming industry taking steps forward, like Miko. You know, uh, as Miko alluded to, you know, no more steps back. No more steps back. No more gating things behind paywalls, and no more cross uh No more uh, exclusivity. So let, let's oh, see. Let's see how this goes. I have one. Since you mentioned paywall, go for it. You know how bad DLCs, paywalls, our loot boxes are already. It's spreading into regular markets like Starbucks. So here's my Starbucks. Story. <laughs> so and oh, let's, yeah, let's so end with this. Let's we, end with this. Okay. So we were in. I forgot what city. We were on our way to Yosemite, and we stopped by a city in between Yosemite to LA. So we went to Starbucks. It was Fresno. We went to Fresno. We went to <laughs> Starbucks in Fresno. And then I wanted to use the bathroom. My uh, Cheska, Cheska and her tita were ordering drinks. I didn't want Who's to. Who's Cheska, any Diego? Who's Cheska? My girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah, honey bunny. My honey bunny. I, I wanted oh. to go to Starbucks and get and, and, and just go to the bathroom. I didn't want to buy a drink. And in the door was those is those touch screen you have to put a code. You have to put a freaking code wow. to get into the bathroom. And you know where you get the code? From the receipt of the item you purchased. Whoa, wait, wait, that happened to me that happened to me. That's um, awesome. That's Ruth next again. level stuff. Dude, yeah. that, that happened wow. um in Paris, dude. That happened to me. I had to buy I had to buy this really expensive twenty euro uh twenty euro ice cream that I did. I fucking melted. <laughs> Just use the bathroom. Just the bathroom. Like my mom was eating it, and then and then I went to the bathroom. When I went back, I was like, "What happened to the?" Oh, I left it there in the table. I'm like, "Crap!" When I look oh. at it, it was just I'm like, "Okay, now I have very expensive soup." Actually, I also had experience with it. Uh, code the, with the Starbucks with the with the lock code. Uh huh. Um, what I did was, uh, I went, uh, what I got to say, I approached, it opened, and an old guy came out, and I just asked him, uh, hey, um, what's the code for it? Then, <laughs> just get, yeah, just get, here you go, game buddy. Game. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got lucky that, that one time, but I never experienced anything like that again. Oh. But yeah, that's oh. real life DLC for, for everyone. Oh my god, yeah. it, you know the world's going to shit when there's a paywall for a bathroom. Well, then again, we have those pay 10 pesos to go to the bathroom. Yeah, but thing and yeah, yeah we've had those start. forever, actually, now that we think about <laughs> we've it. Had, we've had those in, in, like, ever since we were kids, man. Yeah, ever since we were but, kids. But it's like an optional thing. I mean, do you want the regular or do you want the premium bathroom experience? <laughs> oh, then, like yeah, our... there's an incentive. Can I, get, can, can I get that on decaf, please? <laughs> can I get that on decaf? <laughs> do you want the bathroom with the piss on the floor? <laughs> the one oh without it? <laughs> Wait, which like... one do I have to pay more for? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's let's oh, let's, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. Let me... All right, so it's been an, it's been an amazing show, Miko. I already want you to come back next week. That's that's how fun this was. Uh, uh, thank you, guys. So sadly, you know we're gonna have to let you go, but. We also have the after show. We have a bit of an after show, so guys, stick around for those of you watching live. But you know, for those people who have to leave now, Miko, where can they find you online? Where can they find you when when you're not on Game Byte? Okay, so uh, you can find me mainly on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So it's at Miko P. That's M E E K O P I. Um, yeah, that's it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Who's next? Who's next? Uh, Mick, man, where can the folks at home find you when you're not on Game Bite? You can find me on Twitter. That is at the Fury Bot. You can find me on Twitch, where there's practically nothing going on there right now. And I don't think in the foreseeable future, nothing will go on as well. Nothing will go on there as well. 
Uh, that is twitch.tv slash the fury bot. And for everything else, you can always find me here at the Quit Stalling Media Network. Also here yeah. in Game Bite, Wednesdays, 9 30 p.m. Yes. 5.30 California time. Yeah. All right. Uh, you what go, about man. you, Diego? All right. So the, you guys can find me at my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash instadz. And on Instagram as well, instadz. That's I-N-S-T-A-D-E-E-Z-E-E. -E -E. I'm going to try to stream maybe on Friday. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, try to not get stressed with, with uh, Realm Royale as opposed to... Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But, you know, I first marked Realm I'll Royale. I'll join you on Friday. I'll join you on Friday. If, sure, sure, if you right. play in the afternoon, I'll, I'll join you. I'll finally try to experience it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. I curse more at Realm Royale as opposed to Overwatch <laughs> for some funny reason. You, you curse a lot. Because you're new to Realm Royale. When you were Outside, new in Overwatch, man, like... you, were, you were a salty sailor. Yeah, <laughs> those guys were budding, man. I swear to God, I saw that cursor follow his hitbox. Right. With the... Following the head. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's it for me. How about? Oh yeah, how Harold? Where can the fine folks? I don't find you. Ha -ha. Ooh, only took you guys seven seconds. I was counting actually. I was. <laughs> As I already said, like you know, I passed it on to him, so it's his responsibility. <laughs> Oh man! So if you guys want to find me outside of Game Bite, I am on the Quit Stalling Geek Cast. Let me let me throw that up. Every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hopefully, we'll, you know we're back this week. I'm, I'm just waiting on Wancho. Honestly, it's just Wancho, guys. I'm waiting on Wancho. Uh, me and Derek are both waiting on Wancho. So Tuesday, 11 a.m. Oh, why is the Game Bite music playing? Tuesday, 11 a.m. Check that out. All right, you can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, any social media at Harold Plays. I stream video games. Maybe this week I'll play some FIFA Pro Clubs on uh, twitch.tv slash Harold Plays. And of course, I'll be playing some Overwatch with, with Diego. Oh, he's not here. Uh, with Sorbetes, with our, with our other friends. So check that out, twitch.tv slash Harold Plays. Or just stick around on this channel, and uh, it'll, it'll show up eventually. One of these days, it'll show up. But uh, if you guys want to find out more about Quit Stalling, you can check us out on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Quit Stalling Us. We're on Twitter at quit stalling us that's quit stalling you and then an s not because we're in america but because you know i wanted to be clever and someone already took at quit stalling uh we're on instagram at quit stalling yes we're on youtube youtube.com slash quit stalling and of course you're watching us live right now on twitch.tv slash quit stalling if you want links to all the stuff we just talked about except for miko p miko p you go to facebook.com slash miko p uh, if you want to find <laughs> all about quit stalling below look below their buttons Especially if you're watching the VODs. Oh, actually, if you're watching the VODs and you're watching, you're listening to the audio only, there, there are links for Miko P down there. So, guys, check those out. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, let's do this. I always forget to do this. Oh, whoop. there we go. Uh, thank you so much to our number one sub, some dude named Miko P. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> two subs. Two subs. You the man. You the man. Uh, thank you so much to Salon Chen, so underscore underscore sick, Elder Jin, Archer Perez, Pot ZP, and Human Panda 22. Thank you guys so much for your subs. We appreciate every single bit that you give. It all counts, it all matters, and we all love it. Uh, Elder Jin, our newest cheerleader with 1,000 bits. Uh, oh. Nerf Diva coming in behind second place at 502, and Nope underscore plays with 100, tied with Tita Gaming's and Insta DZ. Oh, Insta DZ wanted those, uh, one of those World Cup emotes bad. <laughs> Yep. Uh, of course, our other cheer, uh, cheerers, bit cheerers, Clark, he plays, Cloud Coon, I am Kokak, Dij Fabian, and the Android Master Paul. You guys are all awesome. Thank you. And of course, our most recent follows, DJ Leo Gaming. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, Fortnite for Life 21 to 11. Uh, I'm hoping I read that right. My name is Jap21. Uh, Devin is bad at Fortnite, apparently. Uh, the, <laughs> the guy who likes his knees. Uh, Dumbledore, T Banzon, Glide021, Sax Gamer123, who uh, loved our first episode of Three Guys One Couch. And uh, I browse stuff. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for the follows. We appreciate you very much. We're looking forward to entertaining you more in the coming weeks and the very near future. But till next time, oh, for those of you watching live after the show, just wait after, wait after the credits. Till next time, we'll be back next week. Same bat, same bite time, same bite channel. Till then, get off your butts and quit stalling. That's right, get off your butts and quit stalling. Bye, everybody, bye! Bye-bye. Poops, poops, butt farts, Poop. cracks. <laughs>